Hello and welcome to Steve's Makerspace. I'm Steve and today we do not have Vinny and Norby. We do not have high-speed rockets. We have something that's kind of geeky but it's amazing and a little bit insane. It's scanning in four dimensions. Steve's Makerspace. In my last video I showed how you can make an object into a key by putting it in front of scanners, combining with logic blocks and then open a door. Then I made a bigger scanner and scanned in two dimensions and I said you could make a three-dimensional scanner if you wanted to but that I was done with this project. I stayed up close to midnight trying to get that video out and then the next morning my cat woke me up about 5 30 to be fed and as I was trying to get back to sleep I was thinking about scanning in more directions and but that wouldn't really increase the number of dimensions because there are only three dimensions right? There are only three dimensions. Well, I guess there are four dimensions if you include time. There are four dimensions. And we have a timer. So here's my four-dimensional scanner. There are six banks of sensors. You drop the key in the middle and the lock takes a three-dimensional scan. A positive result gets recorded in the timer. You can see that on the far wall. The key then changes shape, and then a second three-dimensional scan gets taken. A positive result from the first scan coming out of the red timer meets up with the positive result of the second scan from the blue AND gate. They're combined in that yellow AND gate, and then a door opens. That was a slowed down version. Let me show you again in real time from a different angle. Drop in the key, first scan is taken, key moves, second scan, door opens. Now, I don't know how useful this thing is. I mean, it's huge. And all it really does is open a door. It kind of reminds me of a Rube Goldberg machine. I did one of those, by the way. But I think we in Scrap Mechanics spend hours building crazy stuff because we dream of what's possible. And then we test ourselves to see if we can do it. Some people might see us as crazy, but we know better. And we're having fun. Did I mention this thing scans in four dimensions? Now I was thinking about how many lock combinations do we have here. So we've got a 4x4 scan area in one direction, but we're not going to be hanging blocks from the ceiling or suspending them in midair in the middle, and we don't want to have blocks that are just going to wind up falling over. So for practical purposes and to be conservative, I'm going to cut out most of these blocks. So the possible combinations in one dimension is 2 to the 6th, which is 64. But we're taking a three-dimensional scan, so we have to cube that. Then we take a second scan, so we have to square it. Then let's assume that the most time that somebody's going to want to wait for the door to open is only five seconds. So that's 200 ticks you can program into the timer. So we've got to multiply by 200. So that gives you close to 14 trillion combinations for this lock, which is kind of a lot. Compare that to a lock with five switches, which has 32 combinations. Now I started this build with a scan module. I've put this on the Steam Workshop, a scan module NOR. I've also got another version of the scan module for with all AND gates to start with. Each scanner goes to a NOR gate and all the NOR gates go to that AND gate in the back. Oh, I should mention that the gates and timer are out of beta testing and the gates can now receive an unlimited amount of input. So if you put a block in front of one of the scanners, then that NOR gate goes off and then the AND gate in the back goes off. If you then want to program this so that those two blocks are a key, you just change the gate to AND gates instead of NOR gates. When that's done, all the gates will be lit up, including the AND gate in the back, and now your lock is programmed. Now removing your key returns a false result. These modules can be welded together to create a larger banks of sensors and then you can stick on a new AND gate and hook up all of your uh, AND gates from the various banks to this new AND gate. So just as before any block in front of the sensors in the front would um, trigger a false result and if you wanted to you could change the uh, NOR gate to an AND and program your lock. With my 4D scan lock I welded the modules all facing each other in this center area. I've color coded this for the two scans. The red is two sides and below and the blue is two sides and above. 
So I've got three blue AND gates going into one blue AND gate on this wall and three red AND gates going to the one red AND gate on the wall. The red AND goes through the timer and if you have the right key, the two signals wind up in the yellow AND gate and your door opens. Now I want to talk about the key for a minute. I thought this was going to be the easy part, but it turned out not to be so easy. It kept doing this thing on me. What I needed was a way for this thing to turn on and stay on, no matter what. I found a solution by someone named Quietly Wrong, who is writing for a different kind of video game. I'll leave a link to the article, but frankly I don't think it's too useful for us in Scrap Mechanic. It looked really useful for anyone playing Little Big Planet, though. So Quietly Wrong said to turn a switch on permanently, you take the OR gate and feed it back in itself. Well, you can't do that in Scrap Mechanic because of the way the connector tool works, but you can take the OR gate, uh, feed it into the AND gate, and another AND gate, and then back into the OR gate. So you can see I've done that. The scanner feeds into the timer, which feeds into an OR gate. The OR gate goes to a controller. It also goes to an AND gate, which goes to an AND gate, which goes back into the OR gate. So now my controller turns on, and it won't turn off unless you put it back on a lift. I imagine there are lots of applications for this permanent on solution, though I'm not sure what they are. I'd love to hear your comments on that. One last thing with the key, if you happen to walk in front of the sensor, uh, the sensor will turn on and then it'll act kind of glitchy. So you might need to walk in front of it again and place it down a couple of times before it stops acting up. So now it's time to program my lock for the key I've designed. First I'm going to stop the bearing from turning, so the key keeps its initial shape. I'll replace it. The first scan is red, so I'm going to go and replace all of the dark uh, gates to AND gates. And I'll do that for all three of the red scan modules. When I'm done, I'll see the red AND gate on the wall is lit up. And now I'll set my bearing to turn to 90 degrees again. The scanner turns, and now I'm ready to program the blue gates. When all three blue scan modules are completely lit up, then the blue AND gate on the wall will be lit up. I'll also program the timer on the key to be the same as the timer on the wall. So that's it. Now uh, the 4D scan lock is of course available on the Steam Workshop. When you download it, you're going to want to first uh, put a couple of blocks on the ground and then weld um, the whole thing to the ground. When you come up to the second floor, you'll notice the door is kind of twitchy. I don't know why it does that, but it does stop doing that after the first time you use it. So don't worry about it. For the door opening, I'm using this module by Khan Gaming. It's called Dual Button Door Control Block with Timer, available on the workshop. I'll put a link to Khan's uh, channel in the description. Now the key will come welded in place with these green blocks. Just break the two blocks and the key is freed. And you'll see that it immediately works the first time. If you want to reprogram the key and lock, just do as I did. First put the bearing rotation to zero. It'll get jostled, so you'll have to take it out and then replace it. Now I'll add a new block. You'll see that the red AND gate is no longer lit up. So now we'll go take a look at all the red logic gates. That one didn't need any changes. This one's got a dark one, so we'll change that to an AND gate. And if it had been dark as an AND gate, we'd be changing it to an OR gate, of course. Now we'll check the one from below. That needs one change. And now you'll see that the main AND gate is lit. I'll put the bearing back to 90 degrees. The key moves. And now it's time to go to the blue banks and change those. To whatever they need to be. And now the final blue AND gate will be lit up. Reprogram the timer on the key and on the wall if you like, they just need to be the same. And then when you're done, give it a test. I hope it works for you the first time. One last thing before we close. I want to thank my kitty Minerva. If she hadn't woken me up at 5.30, none of this would have been possible. Yes, good kitty. So that's going to do it for today's Steve's Makerspace. If you liked it, uh, give me a big like, subscribe. I'd love to see your comments. 
Um, go check out some of my other videos like my Olympic gymnast, my Rube Goldberg machine, how to make a sign and scrap mechanic. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Steve.